The IMF and the World Bank Group are said to have their 2021 annual meetings from October 11 to October 17. What is the IMF World Bank Group and why should people be concerned about them today? Welcome to our IMF World Bank Group Primer. The origins of IMF and what would be the World Bank Group can be traced to the Bretton Woods Conference in 1944. On paper, the IMF's primary focus is to keep the international financial system stable and to play the role of a lender of last resort when countries are unable to borrow from others. The World Bank began with the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development and has later developed into five institutions that became the World Bank Group. The IMF World Bank Group has been paving the way for big business surplus capital, for super profits via so-called foreign direct investment and loans, especially towards the Global South. In history, the IMF and World Bank Group entrenched the dominance of the U.S. as a superpower after World War II. With its largest shares of capital and voting power, the U.S. had its agenda driving these IFI strategies and decisions. This brings us to an important concern. What has been the track record of the IMF World Bank Group when it comes to people's rights? During the Cold War, the IMF World Bank Group supported U.S.-backed dictatorships that cracked down on left movements. By the 1980s, this came with promoting policies known as neoliberalism, the privatization, the deregulation, and the liberalization of economies. The IMF World Bank Group exerts its influence through policy conditions. From 1984 to 2014, 87% of the total 58,406 conditionalities in IMF loans and structural adjustment programs were just on five policy areas. These drove the privatization, the deregulation, and the liberalization of economies. While the World Bank Group has professed to have an anti-poverty mandate, critics argue that neoliberal policy dictates orient the state's role to merely expanding the power of transnational corporations. This result, they argue, in violations of people's economic rights and in maldevelopment, the destruction of agricultural and industrial capacities to produce for domestic needs. The IMF World Bank Group actively violates workers' rights through policy recommendations such as labor flexibility, the workforce is rendered flexible via minimizing wages and mass layoffs. These remove previously won workers' rights and protections from joblessness. The corporate capture of the food industry and agriculture is promoted through market-led land reform, enabling private investors to grab lands in developing countries. Austerity measures deprive the people of public services such as housing and health, which are crucial in times of crisis. The IMF World Bank Group has been financing controversial projects and programs which grab lands, displace, and destroy IP communities. In the 21st century, the IMF World Bank Group has been promoting so-called public-private partnerships putting the private sector at the pedestal as a key actor to finance development. Campaigners argue that PPPs put corporations in control of public services, limit the people's access, and mean public costs for private gain. Transnational businesses benefit primarily from World Bank Group loans and project contracts. From 2008-2017, 67% of the value of World Bank Group-backed contracts in the top 10 borrower countries went to transnational corporations. The IMF World Bank Group also distorts the notion of development by facilitating corporate capture for super profits and against public interest. As corporations and elites shape the direction of the economic agenda, the people are left behind from policy making and prevent full realization of economic rights and even the people's right to shape development processes. The historical trajectories of the IMF World Bank Group show us why we have to be concerned. 
Have these directions changed amid the pandemic and today's crisis? Not quite as you may think. 